This video looks at the paths taken by light in the vicinity of a mass in a Schwarzschild geometry. It uses the equation of motion to generate a second equation that relates both the potential in which the light moves and the impact per parameter of the path it follows near the massive body. This equation is then used to determine the angular extent to which the path followed by given light ray is deflected. So, not all geodesics followed by light are circular or purely radial. Some involve the deflection of light near the source mass M as shown below. So sometimes the deflection of light near a, a Schwarzschild mass will be small. Sometimes it'll be a, a large deflection and sometimes it'll result in a plunge orbit right into the mass itself ending at the center. So we want to have a look at those forms of motion in this video. So our equation of motion for photons in the equatorial plane is as we found in the previous video, this one here. <coughs> Alright, now this can be rewritten as if we multiply through by 1 on L squared, we have this object here, and then we can write our effective potential is this object here. So this is our effective potential and rearrange this a bit, putting the effective potential on the right, uh, take the square root of both sides, produces this object here. I'll dispense for the rest of the video with the plus or minus in front of here. Alright, next bit. So, from earlier results uh, from previous videos, we found the angular momentum is this object here, using the killing vectors, using a killing vector for the angular momentum. Um, that being a conserved quantity in the Schwarzschild geometry. We have 1 on L is this object here, just taking the reciprocal, and so that we now have 1 on L dr d lambda, the fi parameter lambda, uh, is this object here, this dr d lambda can be broken a bit, d lambda d phi times dr d lambda, where d lambda d phi will come from up here. All right, and that gives us this object here, from earlier, equal to this object here, sorry, from earlier. Okay, and uh, we can see that the lambdas here will cancel, leaving us with dr, d phi, and then multiply across by r squared. So we now have this equation here, and if we take the reciprocal, we end up with this object here, and we'll be using this a bit from now on. All right, just going to have, uh, investigate this a bit further. All right, so we now have d phi dr is this object here. Here's the effective potential. Here it is uh, again over here. And if we look at a plot of the uh, effective potential versus the um, Schwarzschild radius is here, and we've got them in units of the Schwarzschild radius, uh, or c in units of c squared r on gm. All right, and when we plot the effective potential against this, we find that <coughs> we have this maximum here, which is at 3 gm on c squared. You've seen this in the previous video uh, prior to this one, and you see that the maximum here, and we, this value here, c to the 4 on 27 g squared m squared here, that's this value across here, the dotted line. All right, and so the maximum of the effective potential occurs at 3 gm on c squared, as we found earlier. Unstable orbits, uh, the, the one unstable circular orbit exists at this radii. That was the result of the previous video. The, the value of the effective potential at that point is here. Uh, two Schwarzschild radii is here, right there. And moving on, <coughs> let's make the substitution r is 1 on u. So we're heading back to the orbit equation. And we have dr d phi is dr du, du d phi, um, and dr du, dr du, we've seen in the previous video, minus 1 on u squared times du d phi. Um, rearrange that, take reciprocal, we have dr d phi is minus u squared d phi du, and then minus u squared d phi du is equal to all of this over here, divide through by u squared, and we have d phi du is this object here. <coughs> what we're now going to do, the next page over, that we're almost there, is let's consider an ingoing photon so that reverses the direction we have d phi du is one on this object here, so we have an ingoing photon. And the next thing we want to do is this f of u business over here, the, the function of u, we just want to evaluate that and just remind ourselves the function of u is a function of one on r, which is this 
object here? How does this behave? Because if we can make a simplifying statement about this F of U here, then we will, that will help us in the next few slides. Now, when we plot this, we notice across the range of R values here, this asymptotes to the value of F equals 1, that dotted line there, F equals 1, and very quickly approaches very closely that value, F equals 1. It's only for small radii that it's off, and perhaps not by a great deal. So very closely, it asymptotes certainly towards F equals 1, um, but does so quite quickly. So as an approximation, we could set F of U, or F of 1 on R, is equal to 1. Alright, so from the plot we said F of U equals F of 1 on R is approximately 1, so it's approximately constant. And that now means we can go back to our expression, our equation for phi du, and where the f of u was over here, we've left that out now because we've set that equal to 1. <coughs> and what that means is this is now exactly integrable, what will happen, but before we do any integration, we'll just make a substitution, and we're going to make that substitution of 1 on b, where this e on lc is, um, and minus that, and where b is the angular momentum times the speed of light over e, the absolute value of that, and we'll see why shortly, minus this object here, and this will be, we will find to be exactly integrable, which is very helpful. So, integrating this, d phi, yeah, over this object here, du on that, um, we find the constant of integration, phi zero, I'll put that on the left there, so phi minus phi zero is inverse sine u on one on b, and take the sine of both sides, so sine of phi minus phi zero is equal to b times u, b on r, and rearrange that, we have r sine phi minus phi zero equals b, we can choose phi zero would be zero, and that's what we'll do in the next bit there, set our constant phi equals zero, you'll see on the diagram shortly why that makes sense, <coughs> but this is just a straight horizontal line, <coughs> just a straight horizontal line, rearranging for r, we can have r is plus or minus, ingoing or outgoing, coming from the left or the right, b on sine phi, and what does that mean? Well, B is our impact parameter, and so here is a light ray, a photon, single photon, or, or a train of photons, and they're following this path above, and it could also be below the mass here. I've just chosen above here, it really doesn't matter. And it's um, <coughs> following this path where it will pass by the Schwarzschild mass. Will it carry on with only slight curvature? <coughs> If it's far enough away, obviously, it will just carry on in a straight line, not affected by the Schwarzschild mass here. But if it's close enough, then its path will be curved. Or, closer, will it go into a circular orbit, which we've investigated in the previous video, or will it plunge into the centre of the mass? Now, the equation of this line out here, for small values of phi, is r sine phi, just take phi zero, Phi is this angle here, so phi zero means that r has gone to infinity, so the um, photon starts far off. So far off at infinity, phi is zero, phi zero is zero, and it starts off a long way off. So it travels this parallel path with this horizontal axis here passing through the centre of the Schwarzschild mass. So until it's near, and then it feels the influence of the curvature caused by the Schwarzschild mass, and its path is curved, consequently curved as a result. Will it go into a circular orbit? <coughs> will it plunge into the centre? Will it be deflected off? Will it experience a minor deflection and just continue on, or a major deflection? So here's our impact parameter, this distance here. All right, and don't forget the point of closest approach up here, somewhere. All right, now, the impact parameter and effective potential determine the path of the photon near the Schwarzschild mass, so defined in you is one on this object here, the ingoing photon we, we were just looking at in the diagram, and this was replaced by one on B, and here's the effective potential. So one over the impact parameter uh, squared minus the effective potential here. Now, where one on B squared is less than the effective potential, remember the effective potential ha has a maximum of 3 gm on C squared, as we've seen earlier in previous videos, and it's equal to this value here. Where <coughs> 1 on b squared is less than that, then b is greater than this value, or 
integrating this value here, so where the impact parameter is further away from that horizontal axis by this amount or more, or greater than this amount, then here the photon has a point of closest approach before going off to infinity. So its path will be bent, and we'll look later on at how much it's bent by, but for the moment we realise that it, it is bent, it is affected, it is in the curved geometry, the source style geometry, and it will, its path will be curved, but um, it will still continue on off to infinity for this condition, where the impact parameter is greater than this distance here from that horizontal axis we saw earlier. When 1 on b squared is greater than this value, or b is less than that distance there, then the photon will be captured by the central mass and spiral inwards towards the origin. <coughs> that leads us now to look at for photons emitted in the range of the Schwarzschild radius, that's the surface of that mass, assuming all the mass is within the Schwarzschild radius, um, the surface of that mass and 3gm. In that region there, if a photon is emitted, then we find that the one on b squared is greater than the potential, the photon escapes. The one on b squared uh, less than that uh, potential at that point there, we find that the photon ends at r equals zero, so it just plunges in, spirals inwards. <coughs> All right, now, the impact parameter is a ratio of the angular momentum to energy, angular momentum to energy. A photon coming in from infinity and with a large impact parameter will have a relatively large angular momentum, and so will not spiral into the center, r equals zero, but move off to infinity. A photon coming in from infinity with a small impact parameter will have a relatively small angular momentum and will ultimately spiral into the center r equals zero. Now the closer to the Schwarzschild radius a photon is released, the smaller its angular momentum must be and the larger its radial component if it is to escape to infinity. Now at the Schwarzschild radius it must have zero angular momentum and a purely radial motion. <coughs> so it would be directed purely in the radial direction if it is to escape. Um, or just above the Schwarzschild radius, I should say. Um, there's an argument concerning angles there, not in this video, and perhaps I'll make a separate video about that at another time. But you can see the in that range from the Schwarzschild radius up to 3GM, <coughs> what angle it must be released at. But as you get closer and closer to the Schwarzschild radius, the angular momentum needs to go to zero, and you need to have purely radial motion, otherwise the um, light will not escape. It will just plunge back into the centre of the Schwarzschild uh, mass. All right. Now, what we want to have a look at here's a reminder of our diagram. There's our impact parameter. Here's the incoming photon. Its path is described by r and the angle phi, radial coordinate. R min, the point of closest approach, and the angle of deflection it experiences is delta phi. Here is what we want to look at next. What is delta phi? If I flip this diagram around to delta phi on 2, just make this more central, here's r min, here's r and phi, our impact parameter there is equal to that distance r min there, alright, <clears throat> we want to find what this delta phi is. Alright, now the equation that governs the shape of orbits in general is this object here, as we've seen, and we've found the solution for light rays with impact parameter b to be the straight lines given by this object here. All right, now let's add a small perturbation to this form. Uh, U is sine phi on B plus delta U, a small change in the orbit, and then we'll solve this orbit equation again for the small perturbation and just see what we can determine about the angle of deflection. So we'll substitute this into our orbit equation. <coughs> All right, and here we go, this bit here, and when we do that, um, the second derivative of this object here, plus it's our new value, not just sine phi on b, but also this perturbation delta u. When we do that, <coughs> we get this this bit here, second derivative here gives us this, which cancels with that, we're left with this second derivative of the perturbation, and this perturbation here, constant, this object here. Now, delta u squared was a small variation, a delta u is a small variation, so delta u squared would be even smaller, so as an approximation, we can leave that out. And for similar arguments, this will be dropped as well, because this is a small value. For small angles far off, and this 
a whole method we're about to do now is really working for small angles of variation, uh, <clears throat> for small angles far off. So, and phi is small when r is a long way off, so way off in the distance there, so there small angles. This value here is small over the impact parameter, and so this is a small quantity times this small quantity, and so for similar reasons to this, we get rid of this term here. Now to first order, this becomes this object here, and as I've already pointed out, this second can also disappear, for, again, for the same argument, that small object times small object is even smaller. So the second term of the right can disappear, because it's also very small, and we're left with just here is our orbit equation involved in the perturbation part, delta u. And our next step is this leads to a particular solution, um, use a symbolic manipulator or a software package to, to work this out, but you get delta u is this object here. And so the total solution will be the original, the straight line here, the impact parameter b, and then times this solution to the perturbation part. Right? Now, as r approaches infinity, long way off, u will approach zero, so this will go to zero. And a long way off, if you remember from the diagram, phi will be small. And for small angles, sine phi is approximately just phi. And also for small angles, cos 2 phi is approximately 1. And so where that is, we can put a 1. Where that is, we can put phi. And that gives us this object here. When we um, uh, tidy that, 4 over 3. Uh, 3's cancel. 4 over 2 is just 2, so we get a 2 there. And we'll just take this then over the other side. So phi on B is this object here. And we will cancel out a B on each side. So we get phi is minus 2 gm on C squared B. If we now go back to our diagram from earlier, we had delta phi on 2, this arrangement here, delta phi on 2, is um, delta, uh, we have phi on 2 here, gives us here, and I should have put delta in there actually, delta phi on 2. Anyway, um, 2 gm on C squared B, so phi gives us, should be delta phi, sorry about that, is 4 gm on C squared B, so finally the angle of deflection experienced by the light as it passes the mass is, should be delta phi here, 4 gm on C squared B. Alright, and now, one last thing before I finish is that for larger deflections, because we just looked at small angles and we've got that approximation, so for small deflections that works nicely, but for larger deflections, we'll go back to our early result, if IDR is this object here or this one, okay, then we need to integrate, <coughs> then we need to integrate to get the angle of deflection for a photon that is not captured by the central mass, so one that's not captured by the central mass but undergoes a major deflection, then delta phi will be two times, remember that was delta phi on two, so delta phi will be equal to two times the integral from r min to infinity of this object here. So we need to numerically integrate this object here, if we know the values of b, <coughs> and um, see what we get for the variation in the angle. So that's how we'd handle that particular case. Alright, that's it.